Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. One of the standard terms used in the study of genetics is the word genotype. It is the combination of alleles that an organism has. I always think of it as simply the type O genes you possess. And it's your genotype that determines your phenotype, which is showing on the outside of your body. So there's several different combinations of genes that you can use. So you could describe somebody as being homozygous dominant. The root word homo means the same. Zyg refers to the zygote where the two different versions of an allele that you have came together. And so homozygous dominant means that the two alleles that came together in you are the same. Dominant means that they're the dominant one. So if we use big R, say for example the tongue rolling allele, we would write big R, big R. Remember, with genotypes, when you're writing them out, you use the first letter of the dominant trait, like a roller, versus a non-roller, you'd use the letter R. And you use the capital letter for the dominant version, and the lowercase version for the recessive. Somebody who's homozygous recessive, again, homo means the same, so two of the same recessives, a non-roller would be little r, little r. Their genotype would be homozygous recessive. Somebody who's heterozygous, hetero means other or different. So you have to have two of the different. That's why you don't say heterozygous dominant or heterozygous recessive because you simply have big R, little r. This person got a big R maybe from mommy and a little r from daddy. Typically though, heterozygous and homozygous dominant individuals show the same outward expression because they can roll their tongue and they can roll their tongue. It gets a little bit more complicated when you're looking at things like sex link traits. With a sex link trait, you have to include the sex chromosome itself. So a woman can be woman can be big H, big H, X big H, X big H. This would be some a woman who's homozygous dominant for uh, hemophilia, say for example. Or actually she'd have normal blood. She could be homozygous recessive and actually show our hemophilia trait. Males, on the other hand, because they only have one X chromosome and a Y, they can only have one copy. So their genotype, instead of being called homozygous or heterozygous or whatever, it's called hemizygous. Hemi meaning half. So only half of the chromosomes came together in that case. What if you're talking about the genotype of something that is uh, looking at if someone that has uh, got many traits. So you're looking at, say, not just tongue rolling, but whether or not you have free earlobes or attached earlobes. In that case, you just simply write out all the letters. So I'll write big R, little r. Let's say, for example, we're talking about me. I'm heterozygous. I can roll my tongue, but my mom can't, so she gave me the little r. I have free earlobes, which means that they are not stuck into my jawline like this. They're free. So I've got a big E, but let's suppose my dad gave me his attached earlobe gene, but um, I am not a hemophiliac. So this is how you write out somebody's genotype. Would you then say this person is homozygous dominant for all those other things, or a heterozygous? Um, usually not. If you're going into more than one gene, people just say, and I'll use the letters, because that's the easy way, and I like it that way. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>